Hello. Do you need to talk to someone? Uh, not need, but I'm, I have an open forum if people want to talk about the subject that I have on the board. Okay. When do you believe that human rights begin? Uh, when I was born. Abortion should be allowed up to a point when a woman <laughs> decides that she doesn't need the abortion. I mean, things happen pretty late term. So do you, would you support abortion up to nine months? Yes. Yeah. 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 Just full stop? Yeah. Yeah. What would you say to the people that support abortion up to nine months? Horrific. Absolutely horrific. Unless there's medical emergency circumstances that warrant to have that. But just as a choice, no. Too late. I believe that it's her body, her choice, but you can't expect the man to stay. I've never had one before. It's not within the realm of my possibility, but I would support someone's right to have access to one. Yeah. My thoughts are, you know, it's a complicated issue, but I believe life is uh, sacred, you know, and, but I also believe that nobody should be, like, uh, prosecuted for uh, getting an abortion or whatever. Abortion is health care and it is absolutely necessary for the reproductive rights of women and people with a female reproductive system. You don't think that uh, parents should have a say in their child's he health? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Aaron with American Interviews. We're out here today at the Arcata Plaza for the farmer's market to ask the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? We're gonna find out. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? It's my body. Nobody gets to tell me what to do with my body. I don't get to tell anybody what to do with theirs. There are some people out there that would say uh, that a baby's body is different than a woman's body. What would you say to those people? I'm not there. You're not there? I'm not there. I'm not willing to take over a woman's body. That's her decision. Yeah. As long as it's in her body, it's her body. Cool. Yeah, that's that makes sense. Uh, is there is there a distinct line that you would draw at, um, it, for abortion? Uh, we're, it's one person's rights over the other person's rights. I'm doing what the person that's actually alive in the world, in the world. Okay. And as long as it's in my body, it's my body. Okay. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Um, wh when do you when do you believe that human rights begin? Uh, when I was born. So the m the minute you came out of. Your mother, yeah. Who up until that time had the choice of what to do with me. Okay, so would you support uh, abortion up to nine months? No. No. So there is a line that you would draw. There's a line. Yeah, it starts getting messy. Yeah, and that I can't answer. Um, That's fine. I'm, I'm comfortable with what's current with what the current setup or the current setup has been. Roe Ro versus Wade was. I'm pretty good with that. So what were your thoughts on the overturning of Roe v. Wade? I was very unhappy. Very unhappy. Mm -hmm. You don't think that it was, some people would say it was a good compromise for the states to be able to choose um, what, what, they, what they would want in those no, certain the states? states? need to do that, the states need to do that. Yeah. I can't. I don't live in any other state than this one, so yeah. this is my experience. And again, it's my body. Yeah. And as long as it's my body, then her body is her body. Okay, cool. My camp. Well, I appreciate your opinion. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Have a good day. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? Abortion is health care and it is absolutely necessary for the reproductive rights of women and people with a female reproductive system. So uh, what were your thoughts on the overturning of Roe v. Wade last year? Um, I cried a lot. I think that it is, if anything, making it harder and risking lives of women around the country who need abortions and abortion medication in order to live. Um, and that doesn't just mean pregnancies that they wouldn't survive. That also includes living situations that are not suitable for them to have a child and it takes away the right to choose. Some people would say that just because a living situation is bad, uh, that doesn't mean that you should terminate the baby. That's uh, some people's position on that. What would you say to those people? It's not their choice, it's not their life. 
So are you in the my body, my choice camp there? Absolutely. There are some people that would also say that the baby's body is not the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Well, considering that when you can get an abortion, it is a clump of cells. It's no long. It's not a person yet. It's not a person until birth. That's my thought. So, uh, you you started as a clump of cells, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, would you say that you weren't a a person when you were a clump of cells? I wasn't a person until I was born. So the second the second you came out of your mother. Um, yeah, I also think that I mean, considering that you can't have late in pregnancy abortions because that's not safe. Um, I think it really depends on your viewpoint, but I am entirely in support of abortions and healthcare for women. When would you say that um, human rights begin? Human rights begin when you become a human, which happens when you are born. So not when you're a fetus? No. Do you know what the word fetus, the definition of the word fetus? Yes, I do. <laughs> human offspring, right? Yes. Yes. So, so in that definition, it, it, there is the word human. So you wouldn't consider a human offspring human until they're physically present outside of the mother's womb? You don't necessarily have rights until you're outside because when you're in the, your mother's body, that is her body. It's her choice. But some people would say that there is a separate body in there, right? And I understand that viewpoint, but I think that it is an individual choice and that you shouldn't be pushing your beliefs onto other people. Right. That makes that makes sense. Um, is there a, a distinct line that you would draw in a pregnancy where abortion would not be okay? Um, not necessarily. I think that the rule that they have set up, of like the eight-week mark, is ridiculous. That is, no one knows at that point. That's too early. Um, but I do think that it will come to a point that you shouldn't, for a lot of reasons. But I'm not going to get into that right now. So, would you support abortion up to nine months? No. No. So there is a, a line that you would draw somewhere in there. You're just uh, unsure of where it would be right now? No, not necessarily. If it's feasible for the child to live um, at that point, then I do not think. But considering, it's hard to explain. I don't have time to get into that. I, uh, uh, that's fine. Yeah, I have, I have plenty of time if you want to try to ex expand on that. But if you got to go, that's fine. I don't have time today. All right. Well, I appreciate your opinion. Thanks for stopping to talk to me. Have a good day. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? Uh, her body, her choice, man. That's how I'm feeling, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. There, there's some people out there that would say that the baby's body is not the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Shit, I'm not that educated on this. But I'm <laughs> a, all I'm going to say is her body, her choice, man. I believe in that. All right. Have you have a good day. day. You have a good day. I think that all women should have the right to do what they want with their own bodies and the fact that uh, certain states are taking that right away from women is not okay and abortion is helpful in situations of, of not being able to support a child and rape and why would you want to put a child on the earth that you're not ready for? So women should be able to do what they want with their bodies and it's not okay that there's laws against it. Some people would uh, say that a baby's body is not the same body as a woman's body. So what, what would you say to those people? Well, um, when a woman is making a baby, it's inside her body and she is creating it. And the, the part where abortion is illegal is before the fetus is an actual human body and it's still just cells. Most people would get abortions when fetuses are still cells. So in that case, it's not conscious. It can't think for itself. So therefore, it's the women's decision what they want to do with it. Do you, do you uh, know what the word fetus means? Not really. I just know that it's... Human offspring. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what it means. Okay. So, would you, uh, you, you brought up consciousness. Would you say that people in comas don't deserve to live because they're not conscious? Um, no, because they've been conscious. And um, sometimes, I, but I feel like sometimes if someone's in a coma for too long, it should be the family's decision on uh, whether to keep waiting for them to be conscious again or not. But those people in a coma have more, like, I don't know, leniency than fetuses because they've been conscious before and they've already lived a life where fetuses have not. Okay. So it's uh, having consciousness beforehand, or it's not just the uh, ability to have consciousness some someday. Yeah. For you? Yeah. That's, yeah. Cool.
I appreciate your opinion. Thank you. Have a good day. I believe that it's her body, her choice, but you can't expect the man to stay. I'm not saying, you know, I feel like, like yes, it's her body, her choice, so she could definitely keep it, but in the grand scheme of things, if the man doesn't want to have it and you decide to have it, it's like one of the situations like, you feel me? Like, part ways. It's like, it's like you know what I'm saying? Like, you should definitely have the baby. Like, no, like, but you can't expect the man to stay as well. Like, I feel like that's like you're trapping him at that point because that's just like a full excuse just to say, yeah, I can have the baby and it's my body, so it's my choice. So whatever you say is ruled out because it's my body. That's like, you know, but she could definitely have the baby though. Like if she wants it, but you can't expect the man to stay. That's my only take on it. There's two different questions that popped into my head when you were explaining that. Um, so if the mother wanted to have the baby, but the father didn't, would you be in support of the father waiving like financial responsibility after the fact? No. Since the mother does have a choice beforehand? The, the mother has a choice, but the, I feel like the father doesn't have to pay any financial, just support the baby, you know what I'm saying? But you don't got to be there for the wife, specifically. If you're not happy with your relationship within your wife, then, you know, like, to it, so be it. But in regards to, like, like the man, I feel like, honestly, like, you don't got to be with the woman, but... And you don't got to be with the family, but you should support your kid, because that's, at the end of the day, you did that. It's 50-50. That's how I look at it. So what about the reverse in that situation? What if the mother didn't want to have the child, but the, the father wanted to have the child? Her body, her choice, so she could cancel it. It's like, it's, it's, it sucks, but it is what it is. It's one of the situations, like, she's the one going through it. She's the one, so she can actually have the ultimatum. But if the guy wants to stay, that's on him. If he doesn't want to stay, that's on him too. So, it's... So you keep mentioning uh, my body, my choice. There's some people out there that would say that the baby's body is a different body than the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Well, before that, they weren't, they weren't nothing before they were created. So it would be one of them situations like, like, I wasn't, like, no child is, before they're, like, actually, you know, born or whatever, they wouldn't be like, oh, I have decided to be born right here. The parents decided to do that. So with that being said, it's like, yeah, like, they just wouldn't want to do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? If the parents decided to do that, that's just on the parents. Because me as a man, I would never go ahead and have a child or have unprotected sex with someone if I'm not ready for a child. You get me? So it's one of them situations, like, I would just have to think about that in regards to just life. You get me? And that's wherever you want in this life, you, you reap what you sow. So if you want to go ahead and do that, that's what it would be. That's just me, though. I was caught by the question because it's, I'm in favor of women's reproductive freedom and to have it be couched in what are your thoughts on abortion is very uh, narrow and can be seen as inflammatory. So I just sort of wanted to find out where... I try to ask uh, questions around subjects that can be inflammatory in the most neutral way possible. Wow. <laughs> so. That's my thought. I just wanted to share that I'm in favor of women's uh, rights, the f uh, reproductive freedom for women. So, so would you consider abortion as health care? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, what were your thoughts on Roe v. Wade uh, being overturned last year? Uh, disappointment, not surprised. Um, what, why weren't you surprised? because of the Supreme Court being uh, the way it is now, it seems to be much more politicized. And there seems to have been a definite agenda on the Republican Party's side of preventing filling of seats until they were in uh, power. So it seems like it's a very much more political agenda, um, especially the way that the Supreme Court is treating the, you know, trying to take back everything from the New Deal and go back to what the Constitution says, even though it doesn't really... Yeah, there's no constitutional right to abortion, right? Right. Yeah. And so going way back to where the stripping all of the rights that we have had ensured by the Supreme Court. So I think it's also a positive thing in the sense that to not rely on one wing of our democracy, but to actually force Congress to pass laws that will you know, enshrine and protect human rights. Uh, we've been kind of lax, I think, with the 
voting public, uh, just allowing things to be sort of taken care of without our direct pressure. So in a way, it's kind of positive, I think. It's like a wake-up call. It's like, oh, yeah. maybe we need to be more invested in our democracy. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned human rights. When do, when do you believe human rights begin? And you're referring to birth? Or yeah, yeah, just yes. in general. Yeah, back to the topic at hand. Uh, yes, uh, I think, yeah, at birth. So the moment you come out of your mother, yeah. whichever way that, that may be. That's right. Yeah, that's okay. what I think. Um, is there a specific line that you would draw for uh, during a pregnancy for abortion? Where you think it would be morally wrong at any point? Well, that's a different question. I mean, there's viability. Um, morals? Like, whose morals? Like, who? Well, it'd be your, your own. My own. Um, that's a really good question. I think that... Abortion should be allowed up to a point when a woman <laughs> decides that she doesn't need the abortion. I mean, things happen pretty late term in terms of discoveries of, um, for instance, like I think women are, find out that their baby has died in utero, their fetus has died in utero, and at very late time. So then actually an abortion does happen in order to save. So uh, medically it's, I would want to answer it medically and I think it's too individual. Well, if the baby had died, would that still be classified as, a, as an abortion? I'm, I'm not quite sure. Right, and that's why, that's a good question. But I think that's a very good question medically. I don't know if that can be answered morally uh, and um, I want to go back to it being a fetus until birth using that language because words do matter and I think we can get confused and uh, sort of dim or make the top I'm sorry topic yeah um, more confusing for people well fetus does just mean human offspring in in Latin so I mean, it, that's basically the same as baby. Well, it's been used medically for in which location, right? Is it out of utero or in utero? So I think fetus is medically used in utero. Yeah, in utero. yeah. After the embryonic phase, the embryo, right? Because that's up until like eight weeks or something, six to eight weeks or something. Before embryo even, there's some... Zygote, yes. maybe? Yeah. We're, we're clearly not in the... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm clearly not a doctor, so... so but I appreciate your questions about uh, the moral, and for me it brings up what is medical and what is moral. And I think that when we try to put my morals or anybody else's morals on a medical situation that impacts an actual living human being, whom I've already decided they've already been born and now they have human rights, then it gets too sticky. And I think that that's what we're witnessing out of Texas, you know, trying to one one size does not fit all. So you don't you don't agree with uh, the heartbeat uh, bill in Texas? No. No. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, and I'm happy to end this whenever. I don't know. Oh, that's fine. You you want to, Do you want to end it? That's fine. We can do that. I don't know how long if you just oh, I just ask follow ups okay. depending on whatever comes up. But yeah, that's yeah, fine. No, I'm this is a good. So today we're asking the question: What are your thoughts on abortion? Well, my first question to you as a man is what's your thoughts on a vasectomy? Because, you know, that would be helpful too in this birth control methods. Um, I say pro-choice. It's my body. Whatever I want to do with it, it's my choice, you know? So I hope that that transcends as time progresses. To answer your question about a vasectomy, I almost got one at one point because I think I'm done having children. I have two of my own. Um, I think that that would, could be a responsible route to go if, if you decide that you're done um, having children. Good. Um, Isn't it also easy to reverse? Um, there's not, it's not a 100% success thing, okay. but it, like, they, they can be reversed, yes. Okay. Um, so, but to go back to your answer, you said it's your body, your choice. There are some people out there that would say that the baby's body is not the mother's body. What would you say to those people? That's hard for me to argue because I understand their position once there's a heartbeat, you know, and I really, if 
If I had to and it wasn't a, under duress and it wasn't planned, I would keep the child. I really would. So it's not necessarily something that I would choose for myself. But I feel that everyone should have their own choice. Right. And so I still have to stick with that on a hard line right. for everyone's freedom for their body. Right. But I do understand that position. I really do. Yeah, that's big of you. Because I, I would. I would not have one unless it were um, from under duress, as I said. So, you know. Yeah, I, I heard of some statistic about 60 to 70 percent of women that have abortions were had some sort of outside pressure to get said abortion. Right. Depends upon age, circumstances, how the baby was conceived. There's so many factors. Also, the woman's health. There's a lot. I, I absolutely do not agree with any abortion after three months. Right. Nope. We have enough time in that time to figure out what we have to do. After that, too late. So that's the hard line in the sand you would draw. Right. Yeah. You cannot after three months. And when I was much younger, that was the line that was always in the sand. Right. Through Planned Parenthood and everyone else. Every doctor, they never had these late abortions unless it was at risk for the mother or the child. Right. So... So what, what would you say to the people that support abortion up to nine months? Horrific. Absolutely horrific. Unless there's medical emergency circumstances that warrant to have that. But just as a choice, no. Too late. There is a responsibility that we have here right. with that. And, and I, I find that three months is plenty of enough time to figure it out. Yeah. So one more follow-up. When would you say that human rights begin? Hard question for me. Because, again, it's always been three months for me. You know, because then I believe that's when that should kick in for that uh, fetus and, and, and baby. So I, I, I would say probably I'd have to st stick with three months. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then I stand by the baby. Cool. Well, I appreciate your opinion. Thank, Thank you, you so much for much. stopping to talk Thanks to me. Thanks for having this, this forum. Yeah, yeah. I think open discourse is important to move forward yes. on issues. And, and whatever you, you know, I also believe that everyone has their own right to their opinion. So that's right. fine, too. Right. I don't begrudge anyone for it. Yeah, right. Neither do I. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Gorgeous day. Yeah, it's beautiful out. Thanks. I am personally very grateful for abortion. As a person who's had three ectopic pregnancies that were life-threatening, I am still alive and was able to go on and have two beautiful babies because I was able to abort the ones that were not meant for me. And um, For the people that don't know, can you explain what an ectopic pre pregnancy is? Yeah, it's when the egg implants outside of the uterus. So in my case, mine, one was implanted in my tube and it ruptured. And I had two that implanted on the outside of my uterus and were ready to rupture. And fortunately, I was able to end those pregnancies with the support of a doctor after much testing. And it was a life-saving opportunity for me that also allowed me to keep my reproductive ability um, so I could go on to have a happy family. Uh, do you believe um, abortion should be reserved for those types of situations or do you think it should be allowed f as like a form of birth control? I feel like creating labels around it or creating specific scenarios around it can be kind of misleading. I am personally pro-choice across the board. And when we're having conversations about it, it feels important to recognize that while those things would be included and what that means, I also think we need to be mindful of what those words imply and ask directly what we're asking. Do we think that it's okay to judge those who use it in a way that we deem irresponsible? Or do we think it's okay for people to make that choice for themselves and support their journey? Right. I believe we should support their journeys. Right. So a question I've been asking today um, is, when do you believe that human rights begin? You know, that's a really deep question. I personally believe that human rights begin when we're born. And I think that human rights, again, is a really nuanced topic. I think that, you know, we wouldn't force a person to give their kidney to save the life of a stranger, but we would force a person to give their uterus to save 
not even a life yet. You know, it's I think it's a really nuanced what does human rights look like? What does conception look like? What does birth look like? And how do those lang those words fit into our narrative and the stories we tell ourselves about what we deem appropriate and inappropriate? So I heard you mention not even a life yet. Some people would say that the the baby inside the uterus is a, is a life. What would you say to those people? Well, I would say that should that that embryo come out of the uterus, it would not survive most of the time. Right. Well, an embryo is is just like the first six weeks, I believe, right? Right. So before six weeks, there's not even a heartbeat. I, I don't know. I personally don't consider that a life. Um, consider it a fetus after that. I'm not a doctor or anything. I'm just yeah. my minimal understanding here. Yeah, and then consider it a fetus after that. And so, you know, at that point, it would not survive outside of the uterus. So I don't see that as a fully formed human. Right. Um, well, one year. some people would say that, like, one-year-olds can't survive on their own outside of the, the uterus either. They need. They still need support from their mother and uh, and whoever's taking care of them, right? Okay. I don't understand how that's relevant to making decisions about fetuses, but. Well, because you're saying that it's it it can't live on its own. Right. It, there's not a heart to beat. There's not blood to flow. There's not lungs to breathe. Correct. Okay. So, is there a line that you would draw within a pregnancy to say that abortion isn't is the wrong thing to do or not morally correct or? No. So do you, would you support abortion up to nine months? Yes. Yeah. 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 Just full stop? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I Yeah. I mean, whatever a person who's having to make that choice at nine months pregnant is experiencing is something so far beyond anything I will ever know or understand. And I don't feel it's necessary for me to make choices for a person who's experiencing you know, more likely than not the most agonizing decision they've ever had to make. More likely than not something they really don't want to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, thank you so much for stopping to talk to me. I thank appreciate you. you. Yeah. Have a beautiful day. You too. Thanks. Thanks. Well, I don't necessarily like it, but I can understand it. Given the circumstances of what's going on in the control today, I understand why a woman would choose that, why her partner would choose that. I don't necessarily like it, but I understand it. Right. Um, so would you be in support of it or n not so much? I'm supporting it. I would support it. Yeah. I don't. Again, I don't like it because it's not my body to choose. Okay. So... So you were talking about you like the my body, my choice type of thing, right? So there are some people that would say that the baby's body is not the, the same as the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Well, I could see that being a good case for it. That's understandable. Okay. All right. My thoughts are, you know, her body, her choice type of vibe. You know what I mean? Like you got to... We, we can't really make any type of decision. I feel like leave it up to the individual and what's best for them. Right. Yeah. So there's uh, some people out there that would say that the baby's body is not the same body as the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Um, I feel like, um, I guess true in a sense, but not really because um, also there, it could be argued with that, you know, the baby is a part of the mother and technically like during a certain time in pregnancy, you know, the baby doesn't really know its existence, its consciousness. So is not saying that it's not going to become a consciousness and like a, a person or anything, but um, I feel like that, yeah, the, the, that the lady, you know, should, should have control over that. Of the right. Um, is there a specific line that you would draw within a pregnancy to say that then the abortion would be immoral at any point? No, not really. No. I feel like at any point, um, if the mother doesn't feel like she is sufficient to take care of the child or whatnot, um, whatever the circumstance may be, she has 100% the choice to her body and what she chooses to do um, about it. Hi. Hello. Do you need to talk to someone? Uh, not need, but I'm, I am have an open forum if people want to talk about the subject that I have on the board. Okay. I have very strong feelings about it, so I might be back. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe see you in a bit. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hello. You're back. I am. My name's Aaron. My name's Zoe. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Zoe. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? 
My thoughts on abortion are that it should be accessible and free to people of absolutely all ages. That's that's I feel very strongly that you should be able to hold your own health rights as a younger person. Um, I feel like there's a lot of states that require parental consent to get an abortion, and I don't think that's right. Um, I think that it's, a, yeah, pretty much I just think that it should be accessible and free and that everyone should be able to have access to it. You don't think that uh, parents should have a say in their child's he health? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Um, so you're in the camp of my body, my choice, very you would say? So. Yeah, very much so. I I feel like, um, yeah, yeah. There are some people out there that would say that the baby's body is a separate body from the mother's body. What would you say to those people? I would say that life does not begin at conception. Um, just scientifically from what we know, I feel like it's not... I think it's silly. <laughs> you, know, you know that there is a unique DNA created at conception. There's, a, there's new DNA uh, at conception, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Okay. So, and you still would say that life doesn't start at conception? Yes. Okay. Um, because I believe that life doesn't necessarily mean an alive cell. I think life has to do with sentience. And I think that the biggest thing is that people define life differently. I define life by sentience and being able to survive outside of someone else's body, being able to survive on your own, which is not possible at conception. Right. It's not possible for a, a one-year-old to survive on its own either. It is uh, um, able to survive outside of a body, though. Right, but yes. not on its own. No. Right. Right. So there would be a small flaw in that in that logic then. I suppose. Yeah. Um, w when, when do you think human rights begin? Um... It's hard to say because there's obviously a point in everyone's life where they aren't aware of even choices to be made. You know, those first two years of life, there's not a lot of self-autonomy that can be done, yeah. Yeah. you know, at that point because of a lack of understanding. And at that point, yes, parents should have a right to um, decide their children's health up to a certain age but at some point I it's once you have children there that's not you that's you know yeah uh, is there a you brought up consciousness and you believe that that's when um, it becomes a separate human yes. right so what would you say about someone that's in a coma that's not conscious would you say that it's okay to terminate them because of their lack of consciousness Whoever has their advanced directive can make that decision. Okay. And so you believe that the mother has the advanced directive of the baby? I do. Okay. Yeah, of the fetus. Right. Right. Uh, fetus just means human offspring, though, right? No. Fetus means... That's the that definition, actually. Yeah, human offspring. Fetus means that it's still in the fetal f form. Right. As a human, though, right? Yes. Okay. So, um... Is there a specific line that you would draw within a pregnancy to where you would say that abortion is immoral? Maybe seven months. Seven months? Is there a specific reason f for that? Because the baby can live outside of the body. Okay. That's fair. What are your yeah. thoughts on um, what, what were your thoughts on uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade last year? I thought it was deplorable as an action. I felt that it was one of the worst things that could have been done. You don't think that certain states that uh, maybe are more like evangelical in, uh, in their base of voters, they don't have the right to decide that they don't want abortions happening there? Or do you think that it should be f like a federal, a federal decision? I think that it should be federally legal. Okay. I believe that the only thing that's done in leaving it to the states completely is harm. Um, because there are a lot of people with rather skewed views on bodily autonomy. Yeah. Um, some people would say that uh, abortions harm the baby inside the mother. What would, what would you say to those people? I'd tell them they're silly. They're silly? That's what I would say. Okay. Yeah. 
But it is term terminating a life in some essence, right? No. No? You don't think so? I don't think so, no. Okay. But it was so nice yeah. talking to you. It was nice to talk to you, too. Thanks yeah. for stopping to talk to me. Have a great day. You, too. To be clear, uh, to all the people that are going to come into the comments saying that I'm only playing devil's advocate to uh, pro-choice people, those are the only types of interviews I've been able to get, so I can only play devil's advocate to whatever's available. So if someone that comes is uh, pro-life, I will play devil's advocate to them as well. Today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? Um, I think it's case by case, but it depends on the woman, you know what I mean? If she has the means to afford the baby or not, because really the well-being of the baby's life is important too. If they don't have enough money to support it, then it's not good for them to bring it into this life, you know what I mean? Um, but also... Like if something bad were to happen to the lady, like say she get raped or something, then she should be allowed to also voluntarily be able to get rid of it. I think the option should be open. Yeah, that's fine. So two points on that. Um, some people would say that um, just, just because the woman was raped doesn't mean we should punish the child. They think we should punish the rapist. What, what do you think about that? What would you say to those people? Right, so why should we punish the mother? That's gonna be a constant reminder of what happened to her, like day by day having to live I with the child. I, I, some people would say that it's not a punishment for the mother, it's to bringing a human into the world. Um, do you think it's fair to terminate a baby just because the mother was raped? Um, if that's what she decides to do, then that's her decision, I think, yeah. So, I mean, there's also the option of adoption, you know, you could put a kid up for adoption, and me personally, I think that would be my go-to instead of ending the life, but I still think that a woman should have the option to do what she pleases. Okay, yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, so, is there a specific line in a pregnancy that you would draw to w where you would say an abortion is immoral? That's a really hard question. That's a really, really hard question. Um, I get the whole aspect of ending someone's life, like, and that's hard. And I get why someone would say, like, that's wrong. And I totally could resonate with that. But at the end of the day, I think the mom should have the option because it is going to impact her life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what were your thoughts last year when Roe v. Wade was overturned? Do you have an opinion on that? Yes, I was kind of upset because that was a ruling that was already rolled on, so I don't know why it was overturned. There was no reason for it. And yeah, it's kind of really sad that um, the lady who helped it come into th being after she was out of office because she passed, so they brought someone in who would overturn that. That was very disappointing to see. Yeah. So, uh, so you don't think it was the right thing to do? I don't think it was the right thing to do. Um, d what are your What are your understandings on Roe v. Wade and the overturning of it? What, what was your understanding of that? So, I believe that Roe v. Wade was what allowed people to be able to have easy access to abortion, safe, you know. Um, and then it got overturned, which allowed the states in to be able to decide what they do and which is if we had <laughs> um, an idealistic government right when everybody's vote actually mattered then it'd be a little bit different and the states being able to vote would be a good thing but I don't think everyone is voting for what they want and some people don't have the option to go out and um, go and vote sometimes you know what I mean so I don't think everyone's being heard so you, would you say that there's a problem with representation in voting in certain states or just in all states? I would say in most states, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Um, w when do you believe that human rights begin for an individual? Um, I guess human rights begin once they're born. Yeah. Once, once they're out of the womb? Yeah, once they're out of once they're born, yeah. 
Okay, that's fair. Um, so, so you're in the my body, my choice camp there, you would say? <laughs> yes, I think so, because I think that other women should have the right to be able to pick what they want to do. Right. Yeah. There's some people out there that would say that um, the baby's body is different from the mother's body. What would you say to those people? Well, that baby's body is growing in the mother's body, so at that point, there's still one. You think that it's just this the same body? Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Um, when does it not become part of the mother's body? When the umbilical cord is cut or...? Yeah, pretty much. That's when they separate, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, w w do you believe um, there's some people that would... that the proponents of abortion would say that it's okay to have an abortion because the baby isn't conscious. Would you agree with that? They would say that it's okay to do it because the baby isn't conscious? Right. Right. Okay. So that's the question. Um, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if the baby's conscious, unconscious, feels it or doesn't feel it. You know what I mean? But. If the mother doesn't want to follow through, that's an extreme demand for a woman in her body, you know what I mean? And if she doesn't want to follow through with it, I don't think she should have to. Yeah. So would you support abortion up to nine months? I don't think so. So w there would be a line in there somewhere for you then. Where do you think that would be? Yeah, I think how they have it right now where it's like before it develops fully, I think is okay. Well, you still develop outside of the womb too, right? Because you develop into like a oh, full yeah, yeah. human, so. Well, I think there is, I'm not sure if it's like three weeks or something that is the cap right now. I think it's different in different states. Oh, okay. Right, because the overturning of Roe v. Wade, so then that left it up to the states to decide when that line would be drawn, but. Yeah, so, yeah, I... I wouldn't say the full nine months just because at some point it does get fully developed as like besides just an embryo into a living human. <laughs> yeah. Um, some people would, uh, the proponents of pro-life or abolitionists would say that um, life starts at conception. What would you say to those people? Life starts at conception. Can you put that in another term for me? So like the moment that the egg is fertilized, that's when unique DNA is created. And so that's what they believe when life would be created. Okay. So from the moment conception happens, that's when an individual is created in the womb. But they're still in the womb, right? Yeah. So I still think it's up to the mom if she wants to follow through because it's a demand on her body that she has to do. She has to provide. She has to push it through. She has to do all the things, you know. They're just responsible to begin with, and it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I appreciate your opinion. Thanks for stopping to talk to me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, have a good day. You too. So today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? Um, I think abortion... First and foremost, should be left up to the mother. It's her decision. Um, I think the overturning of Roe v. Wade made it very confusing and difficult for a lot of women in America, and it shouldn't have been unilaterally decided, essentially unilaterally decided by a couple people. I think there needs to be like a federal um, limit, I suppose. I don't know or presume to know where that limit is but I think it should be on the more generous side in terms of ending an abortion obviously um, nine months is a bit too much but something like maybe a little bit south of that line if that makes sense um, I definitely think yeah at the end of the day it's up to the mother because yes it's even if in my opinion life does begin at conception that's still on the mother's that's still on her to decide whether or not bringing a child into the, a certain set of circumstances is actually a good idea. You may end up causing more harm than you were intending by having the child. But again, how so? You bring a child into a situation that wouldn't be ideal. If, say, that mother ended up waiting a couple years, um, it could be a completely different set of circumstances for that child if she had it at that point. 
Um, and then that's kind of where you get into the idea of where should the line be. Um, obviously it shouldn't be too far, but you should make it at a point where the woman can still make an informed decision about that. Um, again, I don't know where that line should be, that's for more intelligent people than me to decide, but yeah, I think it should still be up to the woman at the end of the day. Cool. Uh, where would you say that human rights begin? Um, sentience. Yeah. Um, or consciousness, I guess, um, is the more appropriate term. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, the child can't survive outside of the woman. Um, unless, like, unless you get to a certain point. Um, so sentience or uh, consciousness is uh, where human rights are for you? I'd say so. And again, that's more where I'm not intelligent or informed enough to make that decision. But I think if everyone can kind of be a little unhappy with what decision is made, then I think you've arrived at the right conclusion. No one's going to be completely happy. Um, I think the idea that people who want to have an abortion want to kill a child is insincere if you believe that the other side actually believes that. Conversely, thinking that all women are property and they shouldn't have a say in something like this is also being insincere coming from the other side. So there needs to be more of a moderate ground that both sides can be kind of unhappy with, if that makes sense. I've never had one before. It's not within the realm of my possibility, but I would support someone's right to have access to one. Yeah. Can we say something funny about this shit? I got jokes. There are no jokes funny about that. There's no jokes. You can say whatever you want about it. I know. I know. Thank you. Is it my turn? Sure. Can I hold the mic or you hold it for me? No, I hold it for you. Let me stand. Right. And then make sure you get the cut. Yo, one, two. I'm going to spit a freestyle for you. Abortion, here's my view. Do what you choose. One love, you never lose. Live, love, one life. Get it right. Fuck it up. Abortions. It is what it is. It's hard. It's hard. I've been through some. For me, I know some people that definitely did not have mine. But I'm not, like, trying to go and pursue some, anything else. Like, I've seen some people that get really upset about when those things, you know, because it's, it's a touchy topic. You know what I mean? And just to be, keep it light, what time is it, you know? Is it time? Or is it not time? And when it is time, is it time? Do you understand what I mean? Slightly, in a metaphorical way even, if I dropped any on them. Then, next time, happy Valentine's time. That's all I'll say. Okay. One love. The Riddler. All right, so today we're asking the question, what are your thoughts on abortion? My thoughts are, you know, it's a complicated issue, but I believe life is uh, sacred, you know. And, but I also believe that nobody should be, like, uh, prosecuted for uh, getting an abortion or whatever. Okay. So would you say you're for abortion or uh, against abortion? I would say I'm against it, but, you know, I wouldn't um, become, like, confrontational about it or whatever. Right. Cool. Uh, well, I appreciate your opinion. Thanks. Thanks for stopping to talk to me. What was your name? My name is Willie G. Willie G. Cool. My name's Aaron. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Aaron. Have a good day. People don't talk about stuff, and that's why we have problems, man. Right. Everybody, everybody's so caught up in their right, everybody else is wrong. And everybody thinks that instead of discussing it, they can just use force and violence to shove their opinion down other people's throats instead of just, just open-air, calm discussion about tough issues, man. People need to be able to talk. Right. It's, is the reason for so many like communication the lack of communication is the reason for so many problems we have today if people just drop the the veil and the thing that they hide behind and just realize we're all the same and we'd we'd have a better time right 
and something that's actually kind of being weirdly enough on my mind today so running into you is interesting yeah, I guess everything happens for a reason they say I know everything happens for a reason I've been living it long enough man so the, we're asking people's thoughts on abortion today so it's, did you have any specific thoughts on uh, my stance is very simply uh, I can't get one so I shouldn't weigh in too much um I think that it's the your body, your choice issue. Uh, I hate to bring in, like, you know, big old cliche, but, you know, I, I don't weigh on, on things that can't affect, that don't affect me, and I don't think anybody who it doesn't affect should. Yeah, just to play devil's advocate, uh, some people would say that the baby's body is not the mom's body. Well, the baby can raise their voice in objection. I suppose we'll take that into consideration until then the person with the voice speaks. What about, like, uh, if in that case, what about, like, one-year-olds or two-year-olds? They can't speak. Well, they, they can wail when disappointed, and we know that they're not happy, and then we should respond to that. They have an actual voice, and they do use it, just not with words. Okay, so it, it comes down to using your voice for you? Maybe? Uh, I don't know, I guess. I, uh, I, if you can't express dissatisfaction or anything in any way, into a, then how are we supposed to take your voice into consideration? How are we supposed to consider what the baby wants if the baby can't point us in any direction? We're just assuming we know what the baby wants. Maybe the baby's in there saying, no, don't, don't let me come out. And we're just saying, well, the baby has a choice. Well, the baby doesn't have a choice. You're making a choice for the baby just as much as anybody else. Okay. That's fair. Uh, what, what about people like uh, in comas? They can't, they can't use their voice. I mean, if the thing comes out, that, I mean, you should, you should just do whatever at that point. And if the thing comes out, then it has a voice. If the thing doesn't come out, it doesn't. I, I mean, we are to some degree responsible of taking care of people when they can't take care of themselves, but only up to the point that they can tell us. You know what I mean? So that's a complicated situation. If if a person's in a coma, they're already in a hospital, they are pregnant, and then that's progressing along I suppose you help it as much as as you can as far as taking care of that person and if that person comes out of that person then you take care of them oh. is, is there a, uh, a distinct line you would draw in the sand when it comes to abortion like a certain amount of time there's, would you support abortions up to nine months man, there's for law drawing lines in the sand is a ridiculous thing to do because there's always reasons to consider other positions. Yeah, I might say six months is the line, but God forbid, what if somebody was raped and held prisoner until seven months, had no stand? Well, then does my line still stand? Does that make me morally correct? I don't think so. I think that to draw a line in the sand just doesn't consider the possibility of other, other things that could, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm bad with words. That's all right. Especially when I've been drinking Kraken, which... I'm, I'm bad with my words, too. Um, so if someone, God forbid, was, like you said, uh, taken advantage of and they became pregnant from that, um, do you think that we should punish the, uh, the, the perpetrator of the crime, or do you think we should punish the baby? Well, I mean, that's a loaded question, isn't it? It's, it's said in a way that it's like, we punish the baby. Well, we shouldn't punish the baby, but the person... Well, if you're who taking its life... Who should, be, who should be punished is obviously the perpetrator of the crime, but at the same time, again, we're assuming that the baby has a position here. You're assuming that the baby wants to be born. The baby wants anything, frankly. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Well, no, I know, but, it, but when taking that position, that's the assumption being made. We can't assume that, and we should assume that until the... Again, that being has a voice, the mother speaks for it because it is, by genetics speaking, uh, the mother really then. Without the mother, the baby doesn't live. That means it's very much part of the mother. So it's the mother's call. Well, one-year-olds and two-year-olds don't live without the mother either. Right, but they have, they have a voice to express their, their stance in the moment. Uh, so... The, the, again, once they have a voice, they can speak. But until then, uh, the, it's the mom's call. And I mean, I guess I suppose that's me drawing a line in the sand, quote unquote. But that seems seems to be a pretty reasonable line. Once the kid can be like, "Yeah, I'm happy," or "No, I'm not." 
the kid has, until then it's, it's part of the mom until it comes out of the mom it's part of the mom I, I guess uh, Does it, uh, babies do have their own unique DNA though would you I, wouldn't you man I'm I'm no scientist sure why not but if they can't make if they can't in, put in input then we should assume that the mom can put in input for them I guess until they can and until and and if anybody has the right to do that, it's the mother of that child, not anybody outside of the child. Going, but what about the baby? Well, that's the mom's call because it's the only part of the mom until it comes out. It's not any of the rest of us. Okay. So what about in uh, the opposite case? What if, let's say, uh, a man and a woman become the woman becomes pregnant, and the man wants the woman to keep the baby but the woman doesn't want to keep the baby not what about in that man. but it is his baby too right sure but it's not physically a part of him for nine months if i if i've got to say one of them has the right to make that choice it's not him i and uh, that may be wrong then maybe not I, it's just my first gut instinct reaction to that is uh, okay well and we as men know that that's a possibility and if we want to have a baby Maybe we should have that discussion with somebody we're trying to have a baby with. And if, if we just have sex with somebody and they get pregnant, we can't just be like, you have to go through nine months of this and blah, 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 because we want to keep the baby. Well, if you want to keep a baby and have a baby, you should be out on that mission. You shouldn't just be fucking random people and hoping they want to keep a baby if they happen to get pregnant. I don't know, because that, don't you think that affects nine months of the mother's life, don't you think? That saying you have to keep that baby because I want you to keep it. And for no other reason is not that person keeping that person hostage for nine months in some physical sense. You could make that argument. Uh, what if there was some sort of compensation for the woman, like financial compensation for uh, be bearing that difficulty? If the if the man was insistent on want wanting to keep the child, that comes down to a business transaction between the man and a woman. If they make that agreement, then she's made an agreement. They they are in agreement. There's no problem. And if it doesn't come to terms, then you know again her call. But I mean, if they come to some sort of agreement, then it's not anybody holding your hostage. They made a business deal. So you're firmly in the camp of my body, my choice. Very much so. Very much. Cool. I was, it was nice talking to you. You as well. Glad to get your opinion. Thanks for talking to me. People should do whatever they want with their own body. Yeah. 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 Big time. So, um, in the camp of my body, my choice? Yeah. Would you, uh, to play devil's advocate, would you consider the baby's body a different body? Um, when it's born, sure, yeah, of course. So it has to be out of the womb to be a different body? Of course, yeah, 100%. Because it can't survive on its own, yeah. Yeah, one one year olds and two year olds can't survive on their own either. Yeah. So would you be okay with aborting a one year old? Seeing that that's not physically possible, I don't really see how that's. Like, terminating a one year old. That's what I mean. That's what you're doing effectively when you're having an abortion. You're ter terminating the, the baby, right? Uh, no, I don't think it's. You know, like it's not as simple as that. It's like a much, much more complicated, okay. yeah. That's fair. Uh, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, like, I mean, it sounds, it seems, and it sounds simple just to say that, like, if it's in your body, it's a part of your body. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, what about the baby having its own unique DNA? That's That happens at conception. Well, it depends on how like metaphysical of an argument you want to make, because technically everyone has different DNA, right? right? Right, so that would make it someone else, right? Well, that's what I meant by metaphysical, because then if you just go to like a strict biology sense, it should just be like a direct like blend of, of the parents DNA right you know if, unless there's mutations and stuff like that that's where it gets like biological but fundamentally it's the two parents so right yeah so so would you say it's still the mom when it's in in the in the womb and it's not the mom when it comes out of the womb 
Uh, it's a part of the mom when it's in the mom, and it's no longer a part of the mom when it's not in the mom. Okay. But by this, just having the the same DNA as the mother and father, wouldn't they always be part of the mother and father then? Are you talking like in terms of like physical attachment? Because well, well, you wanted to bring it to the metaphysical, right? right? So, right. but now if we're going purely physical attachment, yeah. Um, so you're you're advocating for abortion? Would you say up to nine months? Um, or where would you draw the line in the sand? Yeah. You think up to nine months? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's it's still a part of the body. Yeah, her body. Uh, Even with the with the separate heartbeat and brain waves and everything, you think that yeah. that's, that's okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because it's it's one of those things where it's like if you look at the antithesis of the argument we're making, what does that mean? And it means that people don't make choices based on arbitrary guidelines for their own body. And there's something disturbing about that, um, especially because it's arbitrary. You know, one group of people decides one thing and another decides, an you know, another thing. And whatever those choices are, they inhibit your ability to make choices for yourself. And there's something fundamentally not okay with that, in my opinion. Yeah. So, so if the, the baby can't make the choice to live or not, I'm sure the baby would want to live, right? What do you, what would you think? I can't make a blanket statement like that. You know, it reminds me of, uh, the fucking, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody lyric. You know, I wish I was never born at all. Some people okay. feel that way. Yeah. And so forcing a decision of what you think they want onto something again is somebody else just placing something in somebody else's mouth or mind, you know, that's uh, fair. Yeah. I think if a baby is successfully born, as it develops, it can make the choice of whether it wants to be alive or not. But for somebody else to definitively make that choice for them seems a little bit like playing God. Okay. I think everybody should have an abortion if that's what they want to do. I think freedom of choice is something anybody should have. Yeah. As far as it goes. So you're like a my body, my choice yeah. advocate? That's uh, definitely. To as I think, you know, there are situations where things, you know, just should be able to be happen, I think. To play a devil's advocate, uh, would you consider the baby's body a different body? Um, probably. Uh, I don't know if it's conscious. I don't know. It's hard to say, but I agree. Okay, so if consciousness is a part of it, there's people that are born that aren't conscious, like people in a coma. Should we That's just true. maybe get rid of them? <laughs> I don't know. Are they going to recover from the coma? If not, I, mean, I would say, I mean, I don't know. That's how I feel. That's okay. Yeah, but um, thank you. It's a hard one to nail down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for talking oh, to me. Good one. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron, Master Shredder. No, mas yeah, nice yeah. to meet you, Master Shredder. Yeah. Nice yeah. see you out here doing things. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it, is the child's body separate from the mother's body? It's not like her own body. Right. It is a different body inside of her. Uh, one of the questions that, that, that get raised so much is like, well, what if this was rape or incest? Right. You know, if it wasn't consensual, does that life still have importance? Does it still have autonomy? Is it still a life? And I think we have to say yes, because a lot of, a lot of women that give birth to a child out of rape or incest, um, and that child is healthy, and they have a loving relationship because the bond between the mother and a child, I think, is a bond that is just natural. It's like when a father looks at his child and he wants to be protector. Yeah, I think it's the same. Wherever, however that happened. But if we even put all that aside, and we put, you know, the 
What do they call that? What kind of family unit is that? Uh, the nuclear family? Nuclear. If we put the nuclear family aside and we break it down to its basics, whatever, whatever that person has, um, let's say it was illegitimate. Let's say that it was out of um, incest or rape. Does that mean that if that person were born and he lived to be 20 and somebody killed him, that you could say, oh, wait a minute, though. That was a child out of, you know, rape or... So he didn't have a soul. He didn't have a purpose. He didn't have value. No. No. My mother had an abortion. My father beat her so badly that one of the babies inside of her died. They were twins. They were my younger brothers. And the, um, he didn't allow her to go get medical treatment. So the infection from the deceased baby, the, what you would call it, probably rot or whatever. Yeah, I'm not sure. Got, not to, the, got to the other one and he was uh, very severely brain damaged and had no arms, no legs. He was, completely deformed and uh, when they took the dead fetus out my, my mother finally got sick enough that the family members took her to the doctor and when they took the one fetus out they went ahead and terminated the life of the other you know I guess that was a merciful killing but nevertheless it was a killing we can't we can't say that it's just health care I mean Maybe there are justifiable circumstances where abortion should be allowed, but we can't just say it's health care. We can't be so nonchalant about it right. because it's a human life. Thank you.